Carverite STL import software. Tutorial number three. Importing a 3D model. In your already open Carverite designer software, go to the file menu, select import, and then select import STL file. The STL import wizard will open and prompt you to choose an STL file. Browse to locate the desired STL file and click open. The file opens in the orientation window where it may be inspected and reoriented if needed. This model is fully three-dimensional, which means that we can rotate it and look at it from any direction. In this case, the model imports with the top of the head facing forward or out of the screen. This is also called the Z direction. Let's rotate the model using the arrow buttons so that the face points in the Z direction. Once oriented, let's slightly modify the scale of this model. We can see that this model was designed in millimeters, but that we are currently working in inches. By looking at our y-axis dimension, we can see that the head is about 8.1 inches tall. Let's change the dimension to be an even 8 inches tall. Notice that when we change the y dimension, both the x and z dimensions also changed. This is because the aspect ratio of the dimensions are locked together. Look at the chain icon to the left of the dimension input boxes. Currently it is colored red and shows a chain that links the x, y, and z axes. This means that the aspect ratio between all three dimensions is maintained even if one is modified. Click once on the chain icon and notice that it changes to a yellow color and that now the z-axis link is not connected to the x and y-axis links. This implies that the aspect ratio of the X and Y dimensions are locked together, but that they are not locked to the Z dimension. Click the chain icon again and notice that the color is now green and that none of the chain links are connected. This implies that all dimensions are now independent of each other. We are now done scaling our model. Select Next. Now in the slicing window, we need to plan a strategy for slicing this model. There are infinite ways to slice an object, and in many cases there is trial and error involved in coming up with the final slicing solution. Don't be afraid to experiment, or use the undo button when necessary. Being a head, our model is somewhat spherical, except for the neck and this bundle of hair at the back. Let's start just by removing these two elements to get them out of the way. Using the tilt plane function, we can rotate our slicing plane to the bottom, and then by selecting the bisect style function, we can cut the model into two pieces. The bisect plane function cuts the model into pieces but does not create an official slice. You can then take the pieces created with the bisect function and slice them up independently by selecting them in the slices menu. Notice that selecting the bisect style function automatically moves the plane to the center of the model. From here you can move it in any direction as much as you want. Once in position, let's slice off the neck. Next, reset the tilt plane and use the rotate plane with the bisect style function to remove the bundle of hair on the back of the head. What is left of the head is now easier to work with. Let's start by slicing off all four sides and the top of the head, basically cutting the head into a box. These slices look reasonably good, so let's do it again.
These next slices look pretty good too, but there's something starting to happen here that we need to pay attention to. As these slices start to cut into the edges created by the other slices, we end up with these squared edges. Now when we go to carve these, we need to be conscious of the 7 degree taper of our carving bit. This bit taper will not create a straight 90 degree edge. This is going to make it difficult to seam the model back together. We are going to end up with gaps or pieces that don't end up fitting properly. So this slicing strategy is probably not going to work. Let's use the undo button and go back to the point after we sliced off the neck and hair. This time, let's start the same way by slicing off four sides in the top, but this time let's try slicing 45 degree angles in between. Very quickly, we can start to see that this slicing routine isn't going to work well either. Although we are creating angles that we can carve, some of these deep areas are going to be difficult to get to and we will probably lose more detail than we want. The most important part of this model is the face, so we don't want too many difficult seams in that area. Let's undo the model all the way back to its original state. Now the reason we went through these steps is to illustrate that there are many ways to slice a model. We could probably even make most of these strategies work, but our goal is to find the most efficient one possible. This usually means creating the fewest slices needed to achieve the most important details. So let's look at this model again from the top view, and notice that it tapers from the front and the back to the center. It looks like you can just slice from the front to the center and from the back to the center and then stack up the pieces. Let's start from the front and take a slice off the front of the face. Then let's take another slice, and then another. These slices seem to be working very well. The details on the side of the head are mostly just grooves, so the tapered angle of the bit should be able to create most of these details without a problem. There are a few undercuts in this model that are unavoidable, but not enough to make this an unworkable solution. We'll continue to slice from the front of the face until we get to the middle. Now using the orientation button, flip to the other side of the model. Repeat the slicing strategy moving from the back of the head towards the middle. We successfully sliced the head with only 11 slices. The assembly job required also looks reasonable and simple. Select the next button and proceed to the Confirm Slices window. Check that all your slices are facing forward with the green plane behind and that the Full Depth button is selected. Name your file and click Finish. Back in the CarveWrite Project Designer, create your project boards and lay out your slices as described in tutorial number two.